Elizabeth! The bird, Elizabeth! I lost control! He's coming! This is Elizabeth from 2013's Bioshock Infinite. Technically, until you got to the DLC, she was just a companion character. And we all know what companion characters are like in video games. They tend to be boring, useless, annoying. Is there something you need? Can I carry your weapon? Shine your boots? Back rub, perhaps? Or a dreaded combination of all three. But Elizabeth was different. In fact, she is different. Because even a decade later, she continues to be the shining standard of excellence that all other video game companions should look to. Who are you? My name is DeWitt. I'm a friend. I come to get you out get of here. Get away! <gasps> The Bioshock series, created by Ken Levine and Irrational Games, has been commended for a lot of reasons, and it has deserved most of these commendations. The concept felt fun and fresh at the time, the gameplay was and still is solid, its stylized graphics and imaginative world are just as iconic today as they were on release. And most importantly, the Bioshock series demonstrated that the terms FPS and story-driven don't have to be on polar opposite sides of the gaming spectrum even if the finer details of that story don't necessarily hold up to the scrutiny from a modern lens. There's no denying that Bioshock has had a massive impact on gaming culture. We could spend an entire video talking about its greatest achievements and worst stumbles, and maybe we'll do that one day. But today, we're focused on one particular impact, its contribution to companion characters with Bioshock Infinite's Elizabeth. You killed those people! Elizabeth, I... You're a monster! In an interview with Eurogamer, Ken Levine said he and his team were inspired by the quality of Alex Vance in Half-Life 2. They wanted to push the available technology further and create a truly realistic AI companion, someone who could interact with their fully voiced protagonist. But throughout development, there was a lot of pushback. In that same interview, Levine said that some Irrational game staff repeatedly recommended Elizabeth be cut from the game because of the sheer amount of work they had put into her. But Levine didn't back down. Instead, he created a Liz team entirely dedicated to polishing every aspect of Elizabeth's design until she was the perfect companion to Booker DeWitt. To say they succeeded feels like an understatement. Just like Tommy in The Last of Us, Elizabeth is both narratively and mechanically necessary in Bioshock Infinite. But seeing as Elizabeth is a true companion and not just a side character like Tommy, her narrative and mechanical role is very different. The expectations for a companion in a game are much more intense, or at least they are now after Elizabeth left her mark on the hearts and minds of players everywhere. It's a universal and unfortunate truth that NPC companions in games suck. We've all been the victims of the tag-along characters that only exist to get into trouble. You all right? I'm fine! Leave me alone! Ashley, wait! <gasps> or the ones whose sole purpose is to feed you exposition and game tips. And let's not forget those that stand like a brick wall in the middle of a doorway. Can you just go? Can you just go over there? Can you just go over there? Just go, man. God dang. But even the good ones tend to leave something to be desired. At best, you can count on them as a meat shield in a fight, a second inventory. I am sworn to carry your burdens. Or some fleeting comic relief. You should take it, boy. Yes, boy. Take it. We might need to butter bread somewhere in our travels. This is why no one likes you. At worst, they're Ashley Graham in Resident Evil 4, and the majority of the time, the game would be better without them. A lot of this has to do with how people actually play single-player games, which is however they want. The player is the one who makes decisions about combat, pacing, and immersion. Having companions trot along beside you puts a hitch in all of that, because a lot of them seem to be deliberately designed to be as stupid as possible. There's also the issue of how companions are typically written. They usually struggle from being accessories to the main character because from a mechanical standpoint, that is exactly what they are. They can't be cooler or more interesting than the protagonist, otherwise why wouldn't we just be playing as them? Even games like the Mass Effect and Dragon Age series see a lot of these issues crop up, and that's a studio which relies really heavily on their interesting squad mates. When left to its own devices, the AI will often make stupid combat decisions. And for the most part, they blindly and silently follow the player around like unthinking, unfeeling husks while out in the field. So whether the game is written around them or they're only there as an extra set of hands, companions have always been a little rough around the edges. And all of this only makes Elizabeth that much more impressive. The way Elizabeth functions in and out of combat is a genius bit of game design. Not only does she walk and run at a normal human pace, unlike so many of the worst types of video game characters, but she is helpful in a way that strengthens the gameplay the plot, and her own characterization. 
To be fair, Elizabeth's character is basically a MacGuffin wrapped in manic pixie dream girl paper with a Rapunzel style backstory bow slapped on top. But what should be a fairly shallow and uninteresting character archetype is turned into something much stronger with talented voice and mocap acting, writing, animation, and overall game design. It's established really early on that Elizabeth is naive and new to the world. She isn't accustomed to violence, she's horrified by it. So she stays hidden while in combat for the most part and will move around the map depending on enemy and player placement. But she doesn't just become another object to maneuver around the way other characters in this position might. She's also very self-possessed and eager to help. So she plays the role of support perfectly. Having the ability to tear open portals to other realities, Elizabeth will use her powers to offer up things like med kits and weapons to Booker when he's engaged in a fight. She'll shout out combat tips, but she won't make you pause your game to listen to or explain them. You even have to rely on Elizabeth to pick locks, and she'll even loot things like salts and ammo and hand them to you. This might be the coolest part of Elizabeth from a mechanical standpoint. She'll call out to you verbally, and you can choose with the press of a button to accept whatever she's handing to you. Your POV camera swings around in slow motion and an animation plays out. And then the camera swings back to the action without missing a beat. It's fast, fun, and useful. And it does just as much for the story as it does for the gameplay as each little slow motion interaction helps the player feel more attached to this helpful NPC. And that's extremely important since the entire plot hinges on Elizabeth's character. There are so many little moments where we really get to know Elizabeth as a person and bond with her on a meaningful level. Anyone who read Booker pick up the guitar knows just how important these kinds of moments are when you're dealing with the companion characters. But her personality isn't shoveled to the sidelines. It's taken into consideration with every step the story takes. Whether she's calmly extracting key information from another NPC or literally opening the door to the next bit of the story, Elizabeth is really the center of attention in Bioshock Infinite. Our job playing as Booker is just to get her where she needs to be. That's a pretty classic plot point of what amounts to a man transporting cargo through a dangerous area. The cargo is usually a woman and they're usually special in a key to the universe kind of way. It's been done well, and it's been done terribly. And no game has done it quite as well as Bioshock Infinite. You're never sitting and waiting for Elizabeth to trigger the next objective or hoping she'll stop talking so you can move forward with the story and beat the game. This is because Elizabeth is the objective. She is the story. She is the game. Hell, you could even make the argument that she's the true main character. That's a bold move to make with a companion. But since she's made so likable, it works. Elizabeth isn't a burden. She's her own person. She's strong and capable in a way that Booker DeWitt is not. The two of them need each other, rather than her just needing to be rescued all the time. See the difference? Man, we really went in on Ashley Graham in this video, huh? The point is that Ken Levine and Irrational Games set out to make a truly great AI companion. Though there were dissenters at every turn, worried that achieving such a goal wouldn't have enough return on investment, they kept pushing. And through a combination of talented people at every stage of development and never compromising on their vision, they did it. They did it unabashedly and unapologetically, without fear of Elizabeth coming off as trite or too sincere. They did it with an understanding of what usually makes companions terrible and did the exact opposite. And they did it their way. They did it so well that even after all these years, Elizabeth is still the perfect video game companion. Do you agree with us? Let us know your thoughts on Elizabeth and Bioshock Infinite down below. And in the meantime, make sure to like this video and subscribe to Nerdstalgia Gaming for more content just like this. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. We'll see you next time.